So in chapter three, we are going to start some of the newer calculus stuff by starting derivatives. So 3.1 is defining what a derivative is. We're going to talk about how it relates to uh, tangents and average and instantaneous velocity. Um, so let's take a look. And there were two men that were responsible for uh, creating, developing, discovering calculus. Uh, they were Newton and Leibniz. Um, you will see different notation as I go through the course. Uh, some of that is Leibniz notation and some is more what Newton used. Um, either is, ex is acceptable. Um, it depends upon when you're going to use it. But uh, they kind of were working in the same circles, so there's all a debate who did it first. Um, but those are the two guys responsible. Now, we're going to talk about what we know about the slope of a secant. Um, the slope of a secant just uses the slope equation, uh, the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's. Um, if we use this version we see here, um, eventually it reduces down for the difference quotient. Now, we are looking in this case at a point at x and a point at a. Here, we're starting at some point a, and we are going just an h value further, and then seeing what that is. And so that's why they call that a difference quotient. Both are useful. This one is more useful in more algebraic context than this one, um, but we'll explore each. What the difference quotient does in the x minus a concept, uh, we are taking a point at a, we are taking a point at x, we are connecting it to make the slope of a secant. In this context, we have an A point. We have gone out in uh, a length of h, and then x value of h, and uh, found where that height was, and then connecting and making the slope there. So each one of them is kind of going after the same thing. There's just a slight, slight difference. Now, how does that change how we look at a slope of a tangent? Well, in the first version, we are looking as our x approaches a. So if you recall, okay, here was a, here was x, we've got this function. As x gets closer and closer and closer to um, a, that slope then starts to act like a tangent. Down here, we had a, and then we had some distance away from a, some h. And it's the same idea. That h value, that distance apart, starts to become 0. So we're approaching 0. So that's why this one we approach a, this one we approach 8. They become a slope of a tangent because we're making that distance minuscule. Uh, you might recall we did a chart. And in the charts, we had, uh, I got about like a tenth away or a hundredth away. And we looked at what that value seemed to be approaching. Well, this makes it so we don't have to guesstimate. This gives us the exact slope of the tangent line. The problem is, is the algebra. Sometimes the algebra isn't super cooperative. Now, in the book, they uh, give them little names. That's uh, the slope of the tangent equation 3.3, and this is 3.4. Uh, so in the homework, if they mention use equation 3.3 or 3.4, please use the ones that they have provided. Mm -hmm. 
So in this problem, they're saying using equation 3.3, find an equation of a tangent line. So what do we have to have for any line? Well, the first step is we have to find the slope that they're referring to. The second step, uh, we need a point so that we can plug in. So let's call we need an xy. And then the third step is you just plug into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Actually, those would be x1s and y1s, technically. So we have the quadratic curve, f of x equals x squared, and we want to know what's happening at 3. Well, if you plug in 3, we get out 9. 3 squared is 9. And so uh, we have the point. So that part's done. Now, we're going to use equation 3.3. So um, let's think about what we know. f of x is uh, x squared. f of a is a squared, but our a is 3. That's the starting value or the point that you're trying to find the exact value for. So that's 9. So let's rewrite what we know. The slope of the tangent is the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. Now, once we do this and we set it up, we have to use our rules of limits. If you plug in 3, you get 0 over 0, which tells us there is a removable discontinuity. So, guess what? Remove it. So, remember, uh, that is the same as x plus 3 times x minus 3 over x minus 3. So, we can cross those out. So, we really can just take the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 3. Well, if we put uh, 3 in, 3 plus 3 is 6, and we can use direct substitution. So now we know our slope is 6, our point is 3, 9, the first two steps are done. So the third step is just to plug into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So let's do that. So we get y minus 9 equals 6 times x minus 3. Now, if they tell you to put that into slope-intercept form, please do it. They didn't, so we're going to move on. So there is example 3.1. Now, the only difference we see here, sorry, I must have done that one somewhere along the way. <laughs> um, in uh, 3.2, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to show that we're going to get the exact same answer, but this time we are going to use equation 3.4, the one that uses more of that difference quotient. Now, what do we know? Our a value is 3, uh, f of a is uh, a squared, or f of 3 is Okay, so we've got the point 3, 9. Now let's find our slope. This time, the slope of our tangent is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of uh, 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over h. Now we already know what f of 3 is. That's this right here, 9. But let's talk about f of 3 plus h. 3 plus h is um, just going to be 3 plus h squared, which is uh, 9 plus 6h plus h squared. Okay, so that's going to go here. f of 3 is 9 is going to go here, and we're going to put it over h. So this goes right there. Okay. So the limit as h approaches 0 of 9 plus 6h plus h squared minus 9 over h. Now, you might recall when we did the difference quotient, we touched upon it a little bit last year, and then we did it at the beginning of the year. The algebra should make it so that uh, some good things cancel out, which is happening. The algebra inside of that f of h f of a plus h minus f of a over h should reduce down so that we no longer have an h, which it is. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 6 plus h. Now that allows us to use direct substitution. 
we can plug in zero, the answer is six again. We found the slope, we have the point, we do exactly what we did uh, in 3.2, um, <clears throat> y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So both formulas are effective. Uh, the one you see right here, I would recommend using most of the time. If it's a polynomial, probably the 3.3 uh, equation would work okay. You could probably factor it, but most of the time, uh, 3.4 is going to be the way you want to go. So there's example 3.2. So now I didn't quite um, uh, write the steps exactly the same, but it's the same idea. The steps to find the equation for the tangent line. We have to find the slope of the tangent using uh, the slope of the tangent you just found and the point A, F of A. We're going to plug that into the point slope formula, Y minus F of A equals M times X minus A. So uh, obviously this is your X1 and your Y. So uh, let's do this one using equation 3.3, which I have written down or copied and pasted for you. <laughs> okay, so let's just kind of analyze everything we got. Our a value is 2. So f of a is 1 over 2, or 1 half. Okay, so that's our first thing. So let's replace everything, our a's and our f of a's and our f of x's and stuff in there. Okay, so the slope of our tangent is going to be the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, which I'll just raise 1 over x, minus f of a, which is 1 over 2, over x minus 2. Now, if we plug in 2, we get 0 over 0. That tells us we need to manipulate the algebra. One of the things I would suggest doing is if we have uh, these fractions within the fraction, a good trick is to try and either get common denominators or multiply everything through by the common denominator. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, it is not to our benefit to multiply out the one that we weren't trying to fix. So I'm just going to leave x minus 2 and 2x in parentheses. But on top, let's distribute, let's multiply through by 2x. So this one would get 2x on top, because 2x times 1 is 2x, divided by x is just 2. This one would get 2x divided by 2, which is just x. Now these, the whole thing, if we think of it in parentheses, is a common factor with those, the one down below. But I have discussed with this with you before. If you want to reduce um, a fraction where we have a turned subtraction, since they are technically opposites, we can cancel them out as long as we leave a one half. Oh, sorry. We're getting to that. <laughs> as long as we leave a negative 1 behind. So a turn subtraction can be canceled out with another turn subtraction as long as you leave a negative 1 behind. And I'm just going to put that negative 1 in the top. <clears throat> now, on this, we can use direct substitution. The 2's are going to multiply, and we get negative 1. So what do we have? So we have our point, a f of a, or 2 and 1 half. We have the slope. So now we can just do the last 
part, which is to find y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So the equation of our tangent line is y minus 1 half equals m times x minus um, our a value, our 2. So there is example 3.3. So, now it gets to using the language of calculus, the derivative of a function at a point. The process of finding a derivative is called differentiation, and the derivative is the slope of the tangent at some value a. So the derivative f of a is um, used to find the slope of the tangent you'll notice it's the exact same thing. Okay, so those are equations for the slope of the tangent. So the derivative, the slope of the tangent, those should be uh, reversible in your mind. They mean the exact same thing. Okay, this notation, it is not a one. It is like a little um, apostrophe. And that is just notational. It doesn't mean anything else. But we would re read this as the derivative of f at a. The derivative of f at a. They call this the derivative formula 3.5 and then the derivative formula 3.6. You'll notice this is the same as 3.3. This is the same as 3.4. They're just calling it a derivative now, but they're the same thing. They're both the, the slope of the tangent. So let's look at this one. It says, use the table to estimate the slope of the tangent for uh, using equation 3.5. So let's just first write down what they're saying. The limit as x approaches a of um, x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. And let's, I'm sorry, let's make this a 3. Our a value is 3. So we know how to do that from a table, okay? The values we really need is these two values here, okay? It is just the slope at between that points. How do we do slope? Difference of y's over difference of the x's. And then we have to look and see, well, what are we approaching? Okay, so let's let's pretend we're just gonna do uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, super, super close to three. So I, I've used the values they've provided, super, super close to three. Okay, so um, that's gonna be 6.001 minus 5.999 over um, 3.001 minus 2.999. Okay, so on the top, 6.001 minus 5.999 is, not that, <laughs> 6.001 minus 5.999 is 0 0.002, and then 3.001 minus 2.999 is 0 0.002, and that seems to be 1. Let's see. I I'm just looking at something here, guys. Do we do f of x squared at... Three. Then we get six. As our slope. We did. Let me see if I did something wrong. Oh, 
Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Look at this. They didn't, they didn't give us, those are not correct. They actually estimated, um, they actually did it for us. <laughs> they did that equation uh, at three and at 3.001, and both of those are close to six. Remember I said it was six, so ignore that. Um, that would have worked. <laughs> had these just been our x squared values. What is 3 squared? This would have been like something a little bit under 9. This would have been something a little bit over 9. And it would have worked. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. They actually did the formula right here. See it? And so this one's a little bit below 6. This one's a little bit above 6. So we can say that that's 6. I'm sorry. Wow, I was way overthinking that. <laughs> We should have gotten six. How do we know? The derivative is just the slope of the tangent. We've already done the slope of the tangent at three. Um, this notation just tells us the a value and it tells us the function and tells us that we're doing derivative. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, so here's a new one. <laughs> Here is example 3.5. We'll do two more examples and then we'll stop. Okay, so example 3.5. Okay, so in this example, we are trying to find the derivative, and then we're going to find the derivative when a is 2. Okay, so let's write down what we know. f of x is 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. f of 2 is uh, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1, that's 13 minus 8 or 5, and then the bottom is going to be x minus a, which is just x minus 2. Okay, let's plop everything into the formula. So the derivative of 2 is the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, 3x squared minus 4x plus 1 minus f of a, which we know is 5, over x minus 2. Okay, now, uh, if you at this point were to plug 2 in and try to direct substitution, you would get 0 over 0, which is undefined, which is a removable discontinuity, which means fix it. Okay, so that's on top here. Let's reduce that as much as possible. We get 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 over x minus 2. Now, I'm hoping that there is an x minus 2 in here. I mean, the, the bottom thing is the thing you want to get rid of, so try it. Um, but this does become this, if you see, if you do slide and divide or whatever you want to do for uh, uh, that, you'll see that this is a positive 2 minus 6, which is the negative 4. So that is the factorization. So always use the piece that you think could be helpful to you. Um, so we can reduce it a little bit by the x minus 2 factor. So this is the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x plus 2, which we can use direct substitution. So that's just 6 plus 2, or 8. So um, they didn't ask for the equation of the tangent line, they just wanted uh, the slope of the tangent or the derivative, which we found is 8. One last example. Now, we're going to do the same exact one, except this time we are going to use our uh, difference quotient formula, f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Okay, so a is 2 again. What is f of uh, 2 plus h? That's what's right here in the formula. So that's going to be 3 times 2 plus h squared minus 4 times 2 plus h plus 1. Okay, now let's try to reduce that as much as we can. So uh, when you square that, remember that's 2 plus h times 2 plus h, which is 4 plus 4h plus h squared. Now let's distribute. We get 12 plus 12h plus 3h squared. We're going to distribute the negative 4. We're going to get negative 8 
minus 4h plus 1. And then we finally, finally, finally get in descending order 3h squared plus 8h. 12 minus 8 is uh, 4 plus 1 is 4. And then what is uh, f of a? That would be f of 2. which is 3 times 2 squared is 3 times 4, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 5. <clears throat> now let's set it up. So the derivative at 2 is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h, which we found to be 3h squared plus 8h plus 5, minus f of a, which we now know is 5, over h. Well, reduce your top as much as possible. It should be divisible by h. <laughs> that does not look like an h. And you get that you can do the limit as h approaches 0 of 3h plus 8. So the answer is, when you plug in 0, 8. Now you'll notice we got the same answer that we got up here. We got an answer of 8 in a different way. The algebra works itself out for both, especially with your polynomials, so you can try it both ways. Um, but please try the formula that they have provided um, when they ask for a particular one. Just look in the book or look in our notes. You should be able to find them. Okay, there you go.